What's going on guys? Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you my first look overview plus on feet video of the brand new Nike Tiempo Legend 7 in the black, white, and gold colorway. So, Legend 7, what is it all about? I know a lot of you guys are excited to hear my opinions on this shoe. Given that the Legend 6, the previous model of this, was my personal favorite shoe basically since it first came out. So how does the Legend 7 stack up? That's what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. It's safe to say that this is the most technologically advanced Tiempo model we've ever had. So there's a lot of tech specs to go over, which of course I'll point out every single little detail for you. We'll take a look at how they fit and feel on feet as well, and essentially cover everything that you need to know. So if you wanna learn more, stick around, watch the entire video. If you're interested in a pair for yourself, I'll leave a little pop-up on screen, or you can click the first link down below in the description. That'll take you to the review page on my website, where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes, where you'll be able to pick these up below their normal $230 retail price. Now, of course, these are a top end model from Nike, so it does come with a string bag in matching colors, which is always a nice little extra, but the key focus here is definitely the boots themselves. So, kangaroo leather, Flyknit. it. That is the two main components for this particular upper. And it's kind of unusual to see flying it and leather together on the same shoe. We've never seen that before from Nike. And another interesting design choice is the fact that they did choose to make it a low cut shoe. We don't have a DF version of the Legend 7, which I guess some people might be bummed out about. I personally don't think that this is a line of shoe that should be mid cut. Uh, the low cut is fine. It's the same cut that we had with the Legend 6, the Legend 5. Every Tiempo has been low cut. And while there would be some demand for a mid-cut Tiempo, I'm sure, I think the vast majority of people who would be interested in this style of shoe are going to be perfectly happy with the low cut, including myself. So the upper, what exactly is going on with the kangaroo leather and flying it incorporated as one? So let's start off with the kangaroo leather. You get a good amount of it, which is really nice. Pretty much the same kind of cutout, cutoff points as what you had on the Legend 6. So this curvature on the lateral side around the front of the swoosh, all the way through the forefoot and toe box area. And then pretty much the entire medial side midfoot is covered up until this curvature right here. So the parts of the shoe that should be leather are, and the quality of the leather is pretty good. It's still kangaroo leather like we've had on previous generations. And in comparison to the Legend 6, this feels slightly softer and slightly thicker. I would say it is a slight upgrade in quality, but that's not to take away from the Legend 6. The quality was excellent on those as well. So definitely good marks in the quality department and the touch that it provides because it is so soft, because of the thickness that it is, is really, really good. Now, you're gonna notice that there's minimal stitching on the upper, pretty much none, essentially. Instead, you have this texturing that you can see, which comes from the internal skeleton support frame, another returning feature from the Legend 6. This time around though, the skeleton support frame is a different pattern and it's more significant, I would say. Also, you'll notice that it does have more of a significant texturing and the reasoning for that is the foam itself does seem to be a little bit thicker this time around, but with the thicker foam, the material itself for the actual support frame seems to be a much more airy, uh, I guess less dense foam. So for as significant as it looks, you don't actually feel it very much when you make contact with the ball. It feels more like a straight up leather upper, which I have no complaints about whatsoever. So if it's not there to dampen the, sh the, the touch on the ball, what's it there for? It's there as a reinforcement element. It's gonna prevent the shoe from overstretching and it's gonna add a much more responsive sensation than you would expect from something with a full kangaroo leather upper, which this does have for the most part. Now, along with that internal support frame, they've actually done some stuff with the liner as well, which unfortunately, because I can't really open the shoe up, it's very difficult to show it. But basically from the forefoot forward, there's what's called a new fit mesh liner, which is designed after a uh, Chinese finger trap, which is kind of an interesting concept. And what you'll find on the inside lining is that it fits slightly loose to the inside of the shoe as, it be, as opposed to being pulled tight. So when you refill in there with your fingers, you can almost kind of crinkle up the liner a little bit, which is unusual. But once you actually put your foot in there, it stretches out fully, but it's not a standard mesh that would be really, really stretchy and lack structure. It has a structure element to it. So once you put your foot in there, the fit mesh liner, along with the reinforcement from the skeleton support frame, really make for 
a very locked in, supportive, responsive sensation that you wouldn't expect from this style of shoe, but without taking away from the natural softness and flexibility that you get from a kangaroo leather upper material, which is kind of what traditional shoes are supposed to feel like. So again, that's where you get the really interesting touch of modern innovation while still maintaining the classic fit and feel you would expect from something with a soft leather upper. So that's something that I really like about the Legend 7, very similar concept to that of the Legend 6, but done to the next extreme, I guess I would say. So I'm really, really happy with how that aspect of the shoe feels. So the flyknit aspect, that's obviously something very different. It's visible here towards the heel as it does have a clear Nike skin covering so you can see the knitted aspect of the upper. And really this is just in a part of the foot, the lateral side of the midfoot and basically the heel area. Uh, they used a flyknit one for the sake of using flyknit because it does get people excited. This could have been a regular thinner synthetic and it would have achieved the exact same thing in my opinion, of course, but flying it is something that people are really excited about, knitted uppers in general. So they chose to do this. It's gonna be lighter than the average synthetic leather will be, but do you really notice the flying it aspect of the shoe when they're on your feet? I would argue no, it's not something that is super noticeable at all, but it is well reinforced. This area of the shoe does feel very solid on your feet. So no complaints there. And what is also interesting is that while you see the leather over top here, basically this flyknit material does extend through the midfoot partially uh, on the inside of the lining. So there is a knitted aspect internally as well. And that of course, attaches itself by way of the tongue running through the middle. So you maintain a central lacing system. It's a little bit different than the Legend 6 in that it no longer uses a dual lace hole system, just a single lace hole system all the way up. So it's a little bit more traditional in that regard, but it does have technically a one piece enclosure. It's not fused like it was on the Legend 6. So you can see the actual leather upper kind of just comes to an end and then tucked underneath you have this one piece elasticated fly knit material and it's difficult to show you with the laces on but there is kind of this fold over design for the tongue itself and the reasoning for that is to kind of match the thickness of the leather so it's not overly thin which i think is a really good idea and it is pretty well executed also helps to cut down on lace bite when you pull the laces really really tight if you like that particular type of fit and feel so for the most part, I don't really have any issues with the flying at tongue. Would I have liked it to be leather? I definitely would have been curious to try that out and see how that would work. But with this particular design, the fixed elasticated fly knit, it feels really good. It gives you that little bit of stretch when you put them on and then it compresses back to the shape of your foot. And because it is fixed in place, it's stitched on the sides, uh, it's not gonna move around on you. So you're not gonna have that issue with the tongue sliding to the side, which you, you generally will have with a traditional central tongue design on pretty much any shoe. So overall, I have to say that I'm pretty happy with the way that it fits and the way that it looks as well. Other features you're gonna find with this upper is of course the incorporation of flywire cables, which are basically positioned in the top three lacing, uh, lace holes. Uh, and basically they're flywire cables that run on a diagonal into the base of the sole. So this is really there for containment to hold your heel in place, lock it in place really nicely. You don't necessarily feel the flywire cables all that much on this particular shoe. But you can definitely tell that when you pull the laces tight, there's a lot of structure there, there's a lot holding you in, and it just feels very solid on your feet in general, which is definitely a good thing. So they are serving their purpose, even though it's not something that is, is necessarily uh, what you're gonna be able to feel all that much on your feet. Uh, I guess not at least to the same extreme as you would uh, as something like a Superfly 5 as an example. Um, other features of the upper, ACC all conditions control, you can see the branding right there. That's your wet control element. You get it on every top end model from Nike. Is it a big deal? I would argue no. I don't think it's something that's gonna make or break your experience, but it is something that they have continued to include on the Nike Tiempo Legend 7. And that pretty much covers the upper from the outside. Internally, you're gonna find that it does have a nice synthetic suede liner with more padding than what we got on the Legend 7, uh, Legend 6, sorry, which is really interesting. I am actually a really big fan of how much padding is back here. So the comfort and general lock-in because of this material, it grips your sock quite nicely, is very, very good. You can see they incorporated basically these individual bumps that run along the side, these kind of uh, extra padded areas that again, just feel very, very comfortable, allows for good lock-in. And I'm just a big fan of this liner. I think it worked out really good. Obviously it's a standard low cut like we already talked about. You have an internal plastic heel counter. 
same as the previous generation Tiempo as well. The insole is fully removable. I'll give you guys a quick look at that. Pretty well the same as the previous generation Tiempo, except for the liner, which of course is their Nike grip material, which like it is on the Hypervenom line as well, I don't think that this really feels any different from a standard mesh lining. So again, I wouldn't really buy too much into this particular technology on the insole just because it, it doesn't feel different to me. I mean, everyone's gonna have their own opinion on that. Just feels pretty straightforward, but it's the same insole otherwise as what we got on the Legend 6. So that yellow foam material, and then the pour on foam inserts in blue in the forefoot as well as the heel. So a good amount of underfoot cushioning, one of the more significant foam insoles you're gonna find from pretty much any brand. And you'll also notice that on the inside, something that they're incorporating on pretty much all their top end models now, there is a grip texturing on the base of the sole where the insole sits uh, in both the heel as well as in the forefoot area more difficult to show that part but uh, basically that's just there to prevent the insole from sliding around on the base of the sole uh, it's just a slight grip, grip texturing but a really really good idea that you will find in other lines from Nike as well with their top end models so that is pretty much it in terms of the upper. Moving on to the sole plate and stud pattern, you have their Hyper Stability sole plate now, which is a completely reworked design. One of the more, I guess, high-tech sole plates we've seen from the Tiempo line. I guess the Legend 1 and 2 count as pretty high-tech as well, but ever since those models, they've gone fairly traditional and straightforward with just kind of standard TPU plastic. This looks very mercurial-esque, I would say, if I had to compare it to anything, just in terms of the overall design. And it also makes the shoe quite a bit lighter than what we got from previous Tiempo models, which we'll talk about in just a second. But overall, it feels very, very good. Obviously, it's labeled as hyper-stability, so the focus here was stability. Although it's, it's difficult to say that one sole plate feels more stable than the other. It's got good flexibility to it. It feels nice. I think it looks the part as well. So I'm happy with the new sole plate in general. And then of course the firm ground stud pattern. That has been reworked a little bit as well. It's the same general layout for the most part. You can see you have the bladed studs in the heel that are now kind of chevron shaped studs taken from the mercurial line. We also see this style stud on the hypervenoms at the very back. Bladed studs right there with a little bit more angle to them. It's just a more aggressive look in general, which I don't mind at all. You have the conical studs right here, six of them. And then instead of having conical studs all the way up to the front, again, you get kind of mercurial-esque bladed style studs at the tip of the toe. They're just gonna be a little bit more aggressive, provide that much more bite when pushing off, accelerating for a sprint. And then a chevron uh, kind of stud in the middle there as well for stability and helping you to stop uh, as quickly as possible, kind of a deceleration style stud. Uh, and again, I like it. It's it's the Tiempo stud pattern, but with some extra aggression to it, which I don't mind at all. Uh, it's gonna work well. Uh, it's gonna offer good stability. And uh, again, it's more aggressive than what we got from previous generation Tiempo, which I think for 99% of people, they're not gonna mind that at all. So overall, I'm really, really happy with the changes that they've made. As far as the weight of the shoe is concerned, because we just talked about that with the new sole plate, they're pretty light. I was actually really surprised when I first held them in my hands at how light these things were. In a size 9.5 US, these guys weigh in at seven ounces, which is about an ounce and a half lighter than what we got from the Nike Tiempo Legend 6, the previous generation, which is significant. And at the seven ounce mark, this is in the same weight range as something like a Nike Mercurial Superfly 5, a Magista Obra 2, a Hypervenom Phantom 3, a DF, the only thing that's really lighter in the Nike lineup right now by any significant amount is gonna be a Phantom 3 low by a little bit and obviously the Nike Mercurial Vapor 11. But overall, this is a very lightweight shoe if you're comparing it to other Nike models. And even in comparison to something like a Copa 17.1, which is a kangaroo leather shoe that also is very light, these are actually lighter and I would argue better quality as well. So if you want that traditional kangaroo leather feel, the softness, the classic touch on the ball that only something like this will provide, you can have that, but in a shoe that's not going to weigh you down at all. These are actually lightweight now, as opposed to being average weight like we've seen from previous generation Tiempos. So that's a definite improvement as well. And it's nice that they made that improvement without taking away the quality, without taking away the solid feel of the shoe, because these still feel very, very solid, if not more so than what we got from previous generations. So I'm really, really happy with what they've done here. As far as the colorway is concerned, this is not part of a pack. This is kind of a standalone black, white, and gold color. We had the same thing when the Legend 6 launched as well. And I think they look quite good. 
black kangaroo leather. You have the kind of black and white or black and gray mix in the fly knit exposed at the heel. White Nike swoosh on either side with the gold outline. And then of course the white sole plate with the gold accents and the studs as well. I think it's a good looking shoe in general, colorway aside, they didn't really Changed the look that much coming from the Legend 7, uh, Legend 6, sorry. They kept the styling very, very simple with the Nike swooshes on either side, the Tiempo branding there on the back, which the Tiempo uh, logo is technically a little bit different now. But overall, I think it's a really good looking shoe. And I guess you guys can leave your vote in the corner of the screen. I'll leave a little pop up poll. Let me know what you guys think. Do you like the look of the Nike Tiempo Legend 7? Yes or no? Personally, I'm a big fan. I can't say that I like it more or less in comparison to the Legend 6 from a visual standpoint, but overall, I'm pretty happy with how they look. It's modern, but at the same time, it still has that traditional feel to it, if you know what I mean. So that's pretty much it in terms of tech specs. So let's take a look at how these things fit and feel on feet. So on the right foot, you can see that I swapped out the standard black laces for a pair of white and black grid pattern SR4U replacement laces, which I thought looked really cool with the design. The, the internal skeleton support frame gives the shoe a very kind of structured look to a certain extent. And then the white and black accenting with the white and black on the rest of the shoe, I thought just looked really cool in general. So if you are interested in a pair of SR4U replacement laces for yourself, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. There'll be a little pop-up on screen as well as a link down below in the description. So if you're interested in a pair, be sure to go ahead and check that out. So. Tying these things up and putting them on in general is pretty straightforward and definitely easier than what we got from the Legend 6. I know that's something that a lot of people did not like about the Legend 6 because it was the first Tiempo to introduce a one-piece upper. Because the middle part is now flying it, it has a lot of stretch to it. So it's pretty easy to put on. You just kind of grab this part, grab the back of the heel, and just slide your foot in pretty easily. This middle part, as long as the laces are loosened, will stretch really nicely. And then again, it kind of compresses back to the shape of your foot, kind of like a sock. That's kind of the appeal of flying it in the first place. So I actually really like that incorporation of the flying it in the tongue. When it comes to general comfort, it feels really nice on your foot and gives you kind of this perfect wrap. It's not gonna bunch up on you. It feels really, really good. Tie the laces type, again, pretty straightforward because it is a central lacing system. And the shoe itself just wraps your foot really, really nicely. It has that good, comfortable, soft, out of the box feel that I think you would expect from this style of shoe. So here's a look at the shoes on feet. And once they're on, like I said, the shoe is very, very comfortable. I would say something that is noticeable, noticeably different in comparison to any other leather shoe that I've worn is the fit in the toe box forefoot area partially due to that internal fit mesh liner. It does add kind of a noticeable structure there that's holding your foot in place without taking away from the softness. It doesn't have a rigid sensation, but it definitely does feel like there's something there to reinforce the leather. It's doing its part without taking away the natural softness, which is really, really important. So that is definitely a unique technology that they've incorporated here that does seem to be very, very effective. The rest of the shoe though, feels pretty straightforward. It's soft leather, and of course, as you break them in, the leather's only gonna soften up more. As far as how all of these elements are gonna reinforce the upper in terms of stretching, I'm sure you're still gonna get some stretch out of the upper, but this is definitely not a shoe that I would anticipate overstretching by any means. Um, but it feels good. Do you feel the flying it aspect? It's noticeable across the top of the foot, but I would say the, the flying it down the sides is not really noticeable at all. It doesn't have that softness to it. It's pretty heavily reinforced. And again, it's a very comfortable shoe. The heel lockdown is great. The heel liner is awesome. It's very, very well padded. And the shoe in general is just a very, very comfortable fit out of the box. As far as width is concerned, they've got some decent width to them. I would say these are gonna fit most people. If you have super, super wide feet, I still think that these are gonna be pretty good for, like I said, just about anybody. Uh, it's got a more snug fit. I guess if you're comparing it to something like a Copa, these are definitely not as wide as that but they will fit most people for sure. And again, it's a leather upper, so you're gonna get some stretch out of it from how they feel out of the box. So keep that in mind. As far as sizing is concerned, it's exactly the same as the previous generation Tiempos. They run about a half size small. So instead of wearing my usual size nine US, I bumped it up to a 9.5 and the fit and the length is absolutely perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair of these for yourself, I would strongly recommend going a half size up or sticking with the same size that you wore in the previous generation Tiempos in order to achieve the best possible fit. So that is pretty much it guys for my review of the new Nike Tiempo Legend 7. 
Overall, I'm very, very impressed with them and I can't wait to get more time in these shoes. Other than that, if you guys are interested in a pair for yourself, again, you can click the little eye in the corner of the screen or the first link down below in the description. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes where you'll be able to pick these guys up below their normal $230 retail price. If you have any questions regarding this shoot, leave it down below in the comments and I definitely will get an answer out to you. If you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. And other than that guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, thanks for watching.